Look who I found. It's my partner in crime. It's Steve Ryder. Um, Steve. I'm trying to work. <laughs> and I'm pulling <laughs> you from pillar to post. Yeah, as ever. We'll <laughs> we make it all up as we go along anyway. What's going on? I mean, it's Saturday. You are here. You don't need to be. Why are you here? Well, you know, I don't really get involved in, in, in the coverage of qualifying, but it's good to, uh, to be here and just sort of... Uh, assimilate what's going on, pick up the various bits of paper that you need, not only for uh, the the information that you need about the Touring Car Championship, but, but the support races as well. Um, and there is nothing worse than getting up at or arriving here at 8 o'clock on a Sunday morning and you don't know the first thing about the programme that lies ahead. So it's, it's, it's just trying to get a bit of a flying start. Sounds a bit like me, that's Steve. <laughs> uh, on a Sunday, what about then? How long have you been involved in oh the production of the this championship and motorsport in general? Uh, motorsport, I did my first uh, ITV Formula One documentary in 1978, uh, Italian Grand Prix, uh, and we were lucky enough to be fairly close. I worked for Anglia Television. We were fairly close to Colin Chapman and the team, and, and, and we all went out uh, at his invitation uh, to, to film on the pit wall at Monza in, in 78 when, uh, when Andretti took the title and sadly Ronnie Peterson lost his life in, 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 in the crash. And that turned into a half hour ITV documentary and I was all sort of fairly close to it um, from then on. Regarding the Touring Car Championship, I was working for Grandstand and we realised that um, it was the way to go in terms of the coverage of British motorsport. Grandstand didn't want to make any investment, so we got a little production team together uh, and begged a bit of money from the championship uh, and covered six races in 1988. Uh, and it was real make it up as you go along kind of production. And uh, <laughs> but we did have some fun with it, and it made an impact. Uh, and it grew from there. And uh, y you know, it is nice to sit around. Uh, in in sort of uh, live outside broadcast surroundings and and see what it's become. Murray Walker was involved with us right from the start in 1988, and he always said, and every time I see Murray, uh, I remind him of it. He said, he said, it is wonderful what is happening with the British Touring Car Championship, and you know the 20 minutes on grandstand, and it's all action, it's all action, and so on. But you do appreciate we could never cover this live. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew what he meant, but uh, I mean, thank goodness that we did make the transition because because it is great fun. What is it? What is it like then to work with those legends like Murray Walker, people like that? They're just complete legends of the sport, aren't they? Oh well, absolutely. And Murray was uh, used used to come in and dub the commentary to the races from 1988 and through the 90s and so on. And um, he used to come in, and you know, most of us would knock off a dub in sort of 35 minutes. He would come up to London for two and a half days. We'd have to put him up in a very nice <laughs> hotel, and he would uh, script meticulously script, uh, you know, every um, nuance of the commentary, uh, but then deliver it as if it was a live um, offering. And then we all had to sit down and, and, and review it with him at the end of the day, <laughs> and so on. But it was wonderful just to see the attention to detail and the enthusiasm, and the professionalism there. It's all gone <laughs> these days. We got you now. <laughs> <laughs> and talking of me and, and British touring cars, Steve, your love for British touring cars is so strong. And why is that? You've been around for a long time covering this championship, before I was around anyway. I th well, I think it's, uh, it, it's accessibility. And I think if you, if you get involved in Formula One, uh, and I had some wonderful years uh, through the 80s and 90s working with the BBC on Formula One and subsequently with ITV, but you appreciate the accessibility of the Touring Car Championship. You appreciate the, the, the fact that it is not self-absorbed in, in the same way as Formula One is in particular these days. Uh, the characters are there, they're, they're all approachable, the stories are there, the racing is fantastic. Um, and it is not the meaning of life, you know, like f Formula One sometimes portrays itself to be. It is great, great fun and has huge crowd appeal. Uh, and huge television appeal as well. Last question then. Um, you told me not to ask you, but who do you think is going to win the championship? Because uh, that's the question you asked me, and now you're having it. Uh, <laughs> it is it is early days, so you can pick anyone, and, 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 and no one is really going to challenge it. Uh, I still think... Um, I still think Colin Turkington. Uh, I would love to see Tom Ingram's season really come together. Uh, and push on, but um, gosh, you know, you could name anyone of 25 out there now. It's British touring cars, isn't it? Yeah, and if you came back, even you could win it. 
I've got no chance. But it's nice to see that I'm having a massive impact, though, with you trying to wear the same jacket as me, Steve. Yeah, but this is for Saturday. I wouldn't wear it smart. Oh. No, I, I wouldn't wear it on air, you know, like you do. <laughs> this is just for sort of slumming around on a Saturday. Thanks, mate. Um, whose birthday is it tomorrow? It's mine. Yeah. Did you know that? How do you know that? Because you said we're having a pool party. <laughs> <laughs> I meant in Liverpool. <laughs> Don't be too disrespectful. 10.40am, Sunday, ITV4. Mimi TV, Dad will be there. Happy birthday. <laughs>